Ho, 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 ho. And Merry Christmas to everybody that celebrates. Uh, this is kind of a Christmas special video, I guess. Uh, in today's video, I'm not showing you one of my uh, usual knives, but uh, rather entire sub collection, which is my Great Eastern Cutlery collection. Uh, I don't have a lot of Great Eastern Cutlery knives. Uh, currently have nine of them, uh, but I think they're worth showing off because they're super cool. And uh, yeah, a little bit of backstory. Uh, the first TEC that I ever bought was like, uh, I think close to 10 years ago. And my first uh, GECs I actually sold because at the time I was not carrying them enough and I thought, you know, it's kind of sad. Uh, they're sitting in a drawer, not being used. Uh, somebody else might have more of it, uh, which was retrospective. That was a dumb decision because, uh, you know, prices have changed. GECs are super collectible now. Uh, if you have ever waited on a GEC drop, you know how hard it can be to get a uh, get that actual knife you want. Um, and uh, yeah, a couple of years back, uh, like three years ago, I started collecting them again. And um, yeah, this is what I have so far. Uh, and I think I'm always going to stay in that, you know, approximately have... Uh, I, I only want to have 10 cheesy knives. I don't want to have a huge cheesy collection because it gets out of hand soon or quickly, I should say. And um, yeah, I'm gonna show you my knives. Uh, I think uh, largest to like smallest, approximately in that order. And I'm also gonna show you the tubes that they come with. And by the way, if I get some of the descriptions wrong, you know, the blade shape, the the shield types or anything or, or the pattern name, uh, uh, I don't care. I'm not a, a a super cheesy nerd. Okay, so yeah, there are for sure gonna be people in the comments be like, "You got this wrong. You got this wrong. You got this wrong." Uh, yeah, that's what it is. You know, I just carry them, enjoy them. I'm not uh, whatever. It's Christmas, people. Have a drink, relax. Do not overthink stuff. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. The first knife I'm gonna show you comes in this tube and is called the number 23 and it's actually the pattern name is called the Pioneer Trapper. The Pioneer Trapper is a larger cheesy focus camera, Jesus Christ, thank you. Um, the Pioneer Trapper is a larger model, uh, I think one of the largest models that GEC currently produces. Uh, it's almost a 4 inch blade even, yeah. 9.6 centimeters, something like that. Uh, it is a bigger model. It also comes with a locking system, which is not the usual case with traditional knives. And uh, oh, I said case. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little bit stupid today. Um, comes in this gorgeous little uh, drop point shape. Uh, this is part of the Northfield Annex L line. If you don't know, Northfield is kind of the more premium, quote, premium GC. I think they're relatively similar to the TDUs in terms of build quality. Uh, the only difference here is that you get more of the colored uh, bones and more of the jig bones and everything. So yeah, this one also has the jig bone. I think it's called red tail jig bone. And it has this beautiful autumn red that starts at really, really dark, almost blackish kind of red. And then in the corners is a little bit brighter. And it's, I think, gorgeous color. Yeah, I, I, this is one of the things I love about American traditional knives is the jig bone scales and um, especially the colored bones, they are just gorgeous in my opinion. And yeah, if you flip it around, you can see the stamp on the other side. Uh, all GCs come with a stamp. The first two numbers mean the pattern and the third number in this case is the number five which stands for the drop point. As yeah, so one is the clip point, two is like the spear, and so on and so forth, and five is the drop point. And then it says uh, one, which means it's just one blade, not two blades, single stack. And uh, the last two digits uh, are the, the number of the year, which is 2020. So I have this since three years. I bought this new and I've used it quite a bit. I'm not currently not using it too much. Uh, ever once in a while it patinas really heavily and it gets kind of bluish or blackish on the blade and then I uh, remove the patina which is also why the laser etching on the blade 
is slightly removed. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is. Uh, it's 1095 on all of these, so you get the patina and um, nice walk and talk on this one. This one came in with a really strong pull. Uh, it was like a nail breaker in the beginning and it since then has adjusted itself to like a 10, uh, yeah, between 9 and 10 of the, I would say it's a 9 or pull and it has a nice walk and talk, it runs really smooth, it's kind of big and heavy and it comes with the bullet shield. I'm not sure if you would call this shield any other way. All of these shields have different names, I call it the bullet shield, it makes the most sense to me. Single bolsters on the top, beautiful knife I think, really like it. Like, let's move on because otherwise the video gets too long. The next two knives are actually the same pattern, which is the number 87 English check. Oh, I should show you the boxes first. The tubes, these are not boxes, these are not square. The tubes, uh, so these come in these tubes. And this is called the English check. Did I already say that? Maybe, I don't know. And uh, yeah, these are two gorgeous knives. Let's look at this one first. This is Brazilian jicked um, cherry wood, I think. Yeah, it's cherry wood. Brazilian jicked cherry wood reminds me of an old barrel that has been burned. Beautiful. Looks like a cigar also. It's, this, this wood is so nicely. It comes with the beaver shield. And then the main blade on this one is a clip point. It's long and slender. It's uh, almost a four inch blade as well. No, is it? This is, uh, no, nine and a half centimeters of blade length. So about uh, three, uh, 3.8 inches in blade length would that be. It's nice uh, and uh, lightweight. Also thin blade stock, nice wedge on the top, good belly in the front. You can see the etching on this side and the etching on the other side. And this one, both of these English checks, they have a rather softer pull. I would say it's like a six. And uh, they come with a secondary blade, which is the pen blade. And this one was made this year, 2023. Actually, 2023 was a, a year that I bought a lot of these. And uh, yeah, also 1095. And let's look at the other one. Now this one is not a natural material. This one is acrylic and they call it church class acrylic, which is super cool. I think it's just so colorful, so interesting. Uh, this is a great knife to bring to, I don't know, family reunions or something like that to a, it, it looks like a, a knife you want to go to a party with. It, it is a, it's so uh, fun and colorful and yeah. I like the name also, church class acrylic. It's the perfect name for this type of handle material. And this one comes with the normal shield. I guess it's called the normal shield. Uh, it's like the really basic plain shield. And um, it has some floating on the bolsters. As you can see, this one is rounded. This one is more round, which I also, I like the round bolsters. And these are a little bit more square on the top. There is a name for this for sure, for this type of bolsters, but I don't know it. Yeah, it has the same blade, just a different etching. So long and sleek clip point with the unexcel etching, no etching on the back on this one. And then the pen blade, which is a centerline spear point basically. And this one I bought at the same time. And uh, I still don't know if I keep one of them or, or trade one, one of them or I should keep both, I don't know. And I'm not sure which one I should keep because they're both so gorgeous. So I have uh, kept both of these nice and pristine because I might trade these or sell these or at least one of them. I'm really, I really like the cherry wood. I, I, I don't know. But at the same time, this church class acrylic is just super interesting and unique. They don't do a lot of these, I think. So the next one is the number 81 and it's called the Coon Skinner. It comes in this little tube. I love the tubes, by the way. You can line them up on a shelf and they look really good. And this one, uh, in this configuration is the yellow rose, okay, and this is a uh, colored bone, of course. Like I said, I love the bone handle scales on American traditional knives, and it comes with the rose shield. And the Kuhnskinner has 
They don't call it a clip point, they call it a muskrat clip. I'm not sure if I spelled that co correctly. The muskrat clip. And the Coonskinner comes with two identical blades on each side that actually run on the same spring, so it's a single stack, but it's the same blade. This one just doesn't have an etching on it. So you could say, okay, I use this one as my primary blade and then the other one I keep nice and pristine and really sharp. So there is there are advantages to it, although I don't like generally I don't like the same blade on the on the same knife. I would rather have a different blade, but you know, I mainly like the Coon Skinner. Um, I don't like it too much as a pattern, I'm I'm be honest, but uh, I, I really enjoy this one because of the color. I really like yellow and I think the yellow rose edition is just really interesting. This one I got from a collector and I think this one is made last year, 2022. And this one is also part of the Northfield Unexcelled as were all of the previous, previous ones that I showed you. Now the next one is kind of a special one. This one is the number 86 and it's called the Harness Jack. And I guess it also has the name The Rider. And the Harness Jack is a pattern that was extinct for the longest time. And it was brought back by a collector. And this one comes in this really beautiful white bone. It, it's kind of white and a slight bit of yellow in there. I think it's a really good color. And this one, I think, wasn't dyed. This is uh, just uh, uh, probably it's just the original color tone of the bone, and it looks really good, I think. Yeah, and this one comes with a nice clip point blade. Now we are getting into the smaller knives. The Coonskin also wasn't too big, so I would say these are all the size um, of a good secondary knife, right? So you would have your primary knife, which would be like a large folder or a fixed blade. And then you would carry these as a secondary knife. And um, this one says Wayneorf Cutlery on there. Wayneorf Cutlery is not uh, like a, I don't think it's a proper company, but it is uh, the name of a knife collector, a knife enthusiast. He's one of, one of us basically, one of the community guys. And he has convinced GC to uh, bring back the harness check, which was an extinct pattern. Uh, nobody any uh, nobody produced it anymore and uh, yeah he uh, got these produced by GC and um, and sold them in different colors they come in all all sorts of uh, of colored bones and I think maybe even other materials as well and I think it's just super cool that he brought uh, brought these uh, these knives back. I think his name is Charlie. I'm not sure what's his entire name. I just know that Waynorth is his username on most of the forums. And yeah, he's a guy of the community and he did the community a great service with this, I would say. It's called the Harness Check because it has this uh, this letter punch, basically. You could also call it an awl, right? And it's an interesting tool because it's concave on the inside, so it has a hollow grind here and then it's convex on the outside. So I would say it's really good for drilling things and maybe you can even, you know, cut into leather as well with this. Um, this is not a, like a knife sharp edge, but it is a sharp edge nonetheless. So you could do a lot of leather work with this. So yeah, next time I need to drill a hole in my belt, I know what I'm going to use. And this one is also 1095 on both of the tools. And Clip point is unique because it's rather thick. Most of these GCs are rather thin in blade stock. Let's show you the coon skin again. You can see most of these are really thin. And this one has a thick three millimeter blade stock. I think it's a three millimeter blade stock. And hold on. Um, and then the, the, the yeah, this one is rather thick and then tapers in the front. And it has this beautiful shape. You can see the negative angle on this. So um, this blade is not really straight, but the edge goes this way. And then you have the belly, which is really good for dragging material into this belly. So it's a great, great, great blade shape. I think back in the days they had really effective blade shapes. They used some different angles than we do now. Uh, nowadays, everything is a little bit more straight. But people that back then, they, they really made they really got the most out of their blade shapes. So yeah, 
long pull also on this and um, yeah you can see the, these stamps are also unusual oil the joints USA this is not usually on most of the GECs and you have the pattern name and everything on here and then here it says GEC carbon and yeah this one is a little bit heavier because it's also a little bit wider double stack brass liners I think nickel bolsters and um, what what would you call this shield is it a banner shield hmm it might either be a banner shield or a propeller shield. I'm not entirely sure on this one, but I think it looks really elegant and nice. It's a nice touch. It's way better than if you would just have it plain. So yeah, I really like the shield on this one. Now the next one is probably one of my favorite GACs ever. It's the number 92 and it's called the Eureka Check. Now the Eureka check is also a smaller model, as I said, as I told you before, we are now getting into the smaller ones. And this has camel bone on it, and it's uh, like a goldish, yellowish kind of camel bone. They call it antique golden rod camel bone. And um, yeah, I think it looks really good. It's not as bright as the yellow rose that I showed you before. It's a little bit darker, has a little bit more character to it, but it doesn't pop as nicely as this one. But still, it's an eye catcher and I think it looks really good. This one has the spear shield on it. If you flip it around, you can see it looks like a spear head. And uh, it also comes with a spear point. How convenient is that? Also, you can see the negative angle on this blade and then a big belly in the front. Just a gorgeous spear point shape. This, If I think about American spear points, traditional knives. Uh, this is what I'm thinking about. This interesting blade shape with the big swedge on the top and then full thickness up to here with a long pull. Gorgeous blade shape. This one is also a user. All of these are actually user except the English jack. And This one has a softer pull. Might be like a four. Yeah, it, it is not a hard pull. It's really soft and easy. And um, I personally like the harder pulls a little bit more, but that's what it is. I think it fits this knife still perfectly. Secondary blade is also super cool because it's a Warncliffe blade. I really like the Warncliffe blade as a secondary because you can do all your EDC tasks with the spear point because the spear point is a very universal blade shape. You can do anything from food cutting to cutting up rope or stuff or cutting branches. And then if you need something like a, I don't know, you cut open some packages or something that requires a little bit more tip, then you can use that secondary one cliff blade. And I've used both of these. I like the secondary uh, blade also for sharpening like pencils because it's like small and and good for that kind of detail work so yeah I think this is a gorgeous combination if I like a sec if I have a secondary blade on a on a traditional knife I like it that it's not just a pen blade but like a Warren cliff or something I think that's that makes a lot of sense so yeah and this one is a beautiful size and weight to carry you can see the interesting shape of the handle also with this peak for the, the pin here it's like a lag shape almost. I'm not sure what you would call this uh, this handle shape on the Eureka Jack, but it's a beautiful shape, interesting, unusual. Yeah, gorgeous knife. Now the next one is the number 44 and it's called the Buffalo Jack. It comes in this little tube with the American Eagle. And this one I really like. Now this one is not a Northfield. The other ones were all Northfield so far, I think. And this one is actually a Tilly uh knife and this one you can see the difference from the from the Northfield is that this one has a more plain uh, blade it's not as detailed there's not like a long pull and, and not as many yeah not as many things to be found on the blade it's more simple which is probably why it's part of the Tilly Ute line uh, but it's still a very effective clip point and then the secondary blade is a pen blade. And this one is from 2018. And what I really like about this one, the best thing about this is the walk and talk.
this has just the nicest walk and talk that I've ever experienced in a traditional knife. This feedback that goes through the tang into the spring, into your hand, so nicely. It has a hard pull, it's like a 7, yeah I would say it's like a 7, maybe even an 8 uh, in the beginning. And it's so nicely. The, um, there is slight vibration in the knife. If you open it and close it, and that translates directly into your into your hand, which is it's such a nice feeling. I really like it. This knife has such a nice walk and talk. It's so beautiful, and it comes with uh, green linen micarta. I think micarta is a material that is used more often on traditional knives now, and I think it really fits, especially green linen micarta or green canvas micarta. Beautiful on on traditional knives. Just fits the the character of these knives well. And then the shield here is called a hot dog shield, which takes away a little bit of the elegance of the shield because I think it looks really nice and hot dog doesn't do it justice, but uh, yeah, that's what they call it. And you can also see if I open up both blades, half stop by the way on the pen blade as well, uh, it has a gun stock. So the handle pattern is called gun stock because it looks like the stock of a gun. And I really like it. This is really comfortable. The only problem here is that you always have one blade closed, so you don't experience the gun stock uh, too much. So I would rather have this actually being a single bladed knife on a single stack. I think this would fit it more perfectly. But on the other hand, you wouldn't have as wide of a blade then, uh, or as wide of a handle. And the wideness of the handle gives it the is part of the ergonomics here. So it's a nicely rounded off, 3D contoured handle. Again with brass liners. Most of these, or all of these, I should say, have brass liners. Uh, actually, not that. No, no, that's not true. Uh, most of these have brass liners and nickel bolsters, but uh, and also brass pins. And yeah, the brass and the green micarta goes well together, quite a bit. Yeah, the next one is the number fifteen, and uh, it's called the Huckleberry's Boys Knife. At least the pattern originally was called like that, but I think this configuration is usually referred to as the crown lifter. The crown lifter is one of my favorite GC knives. It's also part of the TDU line, so it's a little bit more simple. It doesn't have brass liners, but steel liners and a more plain blade, but a really useful blade shape. This is the uh, uh, GC refers to this as a, a sheep's foot blade shape. I would say it's a Warncliffe because sheep's foot have um, a sweep to it and a like upswept to it and Warncliffe's have a straight edge. So this to me is a Warncliffe but GEC calls it a sheep's foot so whatever it is, it is a really beautiful and really good uh, EDC blade shape and yeah I love to carry this as a secondary knife. First up it's really uh, small and lightweight and it has a really soft pull on it gotta be like a four or three pull and uh, the blade shape as a secondary knife is really useful and apart from that it also has well first of all it has this cutout right here so you can reach the blade a little bit easier this is something that I really love and then also it has a bottle opener on it that also function as a pry bar and screwdriver so this is the perfect secondary knife in my opinion the bottle opener also has a half stop and has a nice walk and talk as well. And uh, yeah, this is really useful because you have a secondary tool, a bottle opener, uh, perfect for Christmas because you're getting drunk at Christmas and you need a bottle opener. And um, at least I am getting drunk at Christmas. I'm not sure what you are, you guys are up to, but yeah, Christmas is one of the one of the times in the year where I I usually uh, drink a lot of alcohol, which I don't do regularly, but uh, yeah, Christmas is kind of the the time, the best time to do it, I would say. And then uh, it says the crown lift on here, but the etching is kind of uh, gone at this point. You don't see it really well anymore. There you go. Yeah, you can see it. But yeah, this is such a great secondary knife. Like I said, if you can like a Zabenzo or something or a large EDC folder, and then you still have a sharp one cliff blade shape, and you have a bottle opener. And then there's also something about this 
The scales are actually acrylic, but they are called night bright acrylic, so they actually glow in the dark. Let me. So. And maybe, let's turn off the light here. So, yeah, here you can see it. So, if you're drunk and use your, uh, lose your knife, because you have to open too many bottles with it, uh, you can pull out your flashlight and shine at it and it shines back. So that's that's super cool. I'm not sure what you guys think about these modern materials on traditional knives, but I think it's okay, especially on this TDU line um, that are a little bit more simple. I think some more modern material that is not bone uh, or wood is, is fine as well. I really, I was not um, sure about whether I like the glow in the dark scales on a traditional knife at first, but actually I really like it. This is a great knife. So, and now the last knife is the number 47. And it's called the Harvester. And this is the Harvester, which is I think also from earlier this year, if I'm correctly. Yeah, it's a 2023 knife as well. And this one is a prune blade shape, which is also why on the stamps back here, usually the first uh, the third uh, stamp would be uh, a number for the blade shape, but in this case it's a P, and P of course stands for Pruna here. And then yeah, 47 pattern name, uh, P Pruna, one is the, that's it's just a single stack, and then 23 for the, for the year. So yeah, this is the Pruna blade shape, which is a great blade shape for gardening, or cutting off branches, which is also why this is like a sway back handle. So uh, you can hold it in reverse grip really well. I, most often I use it in this grip nonetheless. It has a nice solid half stop on there so you're not cutting yourself easily. Has a rather soft pull on it as well. It's gotta be like a 4 or something. This one also just has steel liners and uh, is also part of the TDU line. And also 1095 as all of these, nice long swedge. A lot of people didn't like the blade shape, uh, so these were available a little bit longer than most of the GEC knives when it dropped. And uh, I really like it, I think it's a great knife. Uh, I think it's very useful. And uh, yeah, I'm not seeing this leaving my collection anytime soon because I actually like to use it. Uh, I do a little bit of gardening work here and there and uh, I like to work with plants and yeah, this is the perfect plant knife. I have a case uh, Hawkbill Pruna as well and uh, yeah, but this one is uh, just done a little bit more nicer, I would say. And then the shield type on this one is called a badge, like a badge of a uniform and uh, yeah, you can see why it's the same shape, single bolster. And the beautiful thing about this is that it actually has a, a lanyard hole or a lanyard tube, I should say, that's made from brass. And uh, I wish these were on more GCs, especially on the smaller ones. I would really see more lanyard holes because they go so well together with leather lanyards. This is not a really nicely tied one. This is just more of a functional la lanyard. And um, yeah, but I really wish they would do more lanyard holes. So yeah, this is the harvest star. So I show all of these, put all of these in frame and yeah, so this was my GEC collection. I really like these knives. I think they are so beautiful. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if my collection will change. I'm 100% uh, never gonna sell the smaller ones because I carry them the most. I just like them the most. I think they're just the most useful secondary knives. And yeah, I usually carry my GEC in a leather slip with a clip. That's the most perfect way that I have found so far to carry these. They don't get banged up and they also are not turning in the pocket. So yeah, this is how I carry them. So yeah, this was my GC collection. Uh, Merry Christmas again for everybody. I'm gonna, uh, gonna end this video right here and get drunk really bad. And uh, I will see you guys probably in the next video. Uh, goodbye people. <laughs>